Okay, so now I need to figure out how I want to place that in this compositional space. So usually I would do a little bit of a little bit of this action where you, you know you make the box the compositional box with your hands to see what you really want to put in there. However, when you're doing a self-portrait, you can't really do that because, you know, the moment you change the pose, the, you're not looking at the same thing anymore. So, um, it's going to be a little trickier that way. And this is when, you know, thumbnails really come in handy, um, compositional sketches, things like that. Um, so you can design it before you start. Um, this is going to be a little different of a process, but I still want to understand how it's going to fit um, within these within these edges. So I'll get my head back in position here. So the one thing I'm uh, I don't think I've addressed yet um, when I'm measuring, I'm always closing one eye, and that is obviously so it's just a lot easier to focus. Um, on the pencil, um, not, you know, both eyes aren't trying to focus on on multiple things. It's just easier to control. So I have this measurement. Now I'm going to move down. So two. So I start with one. And now two, three, and three is almost at this point here, which is a nice little measurement to have. Three, four, and five. So I think maybe I want about four and a half down. I'm not sure I need to go all the way to five, so I'll be cutting the composition somewhere about here because um, I could get a little bit more in there, but I'm not sure I just need that much shirt. I don't think I care enough about rendering all of this shirt to have more of it in there. My, my focus right now really is more the head and kind of the, the, the drama of the pose and the drama of the light. So, um, so we'll say it's four and a half down from the top of my brow, my eyebrow here. And now let's move up from there. Let's see, one, two, three. I'm seeing about where three gets me. A decent amount of space above the head. Might be a little bit too much, um, but we'll see. So we got a three there. So that would be, you know, four and a half down, three up. So that's seven and a half. And I'm working with a square here, so it would be seven and a half in the width as well, um, just to get an idea here. Okay, so I'm starting once again from the um, the left side of my head, going over to that tear duct one. Two, three, four, five, and then moving back over. One, two, okay. Just to get an idea of about where I want the head and space. So, for this, the vertical, um, the vertical is what's going to matter the most. But so, I just said seven and a half. So I have twenty inches here. But let's do this freehand because that's usually the way I do it. So I'm going to start with seven and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pencil just as the measuring device. So I'm going to measure this the same way where the tip of the pencil 
is the top measurement and then my finger is marking the bottom. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that was seven exactly. So if I want seven and a half, I'm going to make this a little bit shorter. And this obviously makes a lot more sense when you're using a ruler with it, but when you're um, when you're working on site, or if you don't have a ruler with you, um, this is you know kind of the best method you have. Um, and it's a little bit more trial and error, but um, it still works quite well to get all the measurements correct. So it's three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, and that's a half. So that. This is what I'm going to use right here. So now I'm going to actually mark it. I always like to go back and recheck to make sure I marked it in the right spot. And this is marked just a little bit low. So it's one. And then we have two here. And then we have Three, four, five. Let me check that one again just to make sure. Five. Yeah, this should be there. Also, guys, if you have little marks on there that are inconsistent, little measurements and ticks and things like that that you don't want to use, and get rid of them. Um, otherwise, they're going to mess you up at, at, at some point. Um, this is just the very beginning. There will be a lot more tick marks on here soon enough, and you really only want the ones that you're going to use on there. So, let's see, let me re-get my, get my measurement here again. So moving down to the bottom, you can also use your finger to kind of mark the bottom part. Just making sure that's still correct. Yeah, that looks good. And, it's the last one. It's going to be about right there. Okay. So I do have a couple other ticks on here. Just going to lightly move this out of the way a little bit. So, if I was to set this up exactly how it was, let's see. Um, one, two, three, four. So my eyes would be about here. This would be the bottom of my nostril, right here. This is about the, let's see, yeah, eyes, nose, chin, and then this is where my collar is. That's just a bit lower. Let me measure that again just to make sure. So I'm, I'm in the habit of double and oftentimes triple checking my measurements. Because um, even, though, even though in the drawing stage you can really quantify this stuff more than when you get into the painting and all of the tone, um, like you can really do a lot more math here um, and a lot more geometry to actually get everything set up perfectly. Even though you can do all that, there still seems to be so much room for error in the drawing. And considering that this is the foundation for everything that you'll be building on top, it makes sense to really take the time here. So 
Um, you don't want to, obviously you don't want to build a house on top of a foundation that isn't secure, isn't level. Um, you know, you want to make sure all of that stuff is correct before you start adding um, the more exciting stuff on top. So now that I have these vertical measurements in here, I gotta flip them on their side. And for the side measurement, I'm gonna be a little bit, um, a little bit looser with how I'm gonna place that. Um, because I'm not going to be including any background elements in this composition. I really just wanna focus on the head. So what I'm deciding right now is where do I want the edge of my head? So that's what I'm trying to decide in this, in this big compositional space. Where do I want the edge of my head? And it's going to work like basically right off of this line. So the horizontal, you know, the main horizontal axis I'm using is kind of right below that eyebrow measurement. So it'll be somewhere you know, somewhere around here is about the, um, the horizontal that I'm dealing with here. But so, where would I like this? So what I know is that in this measurement here that I have with my pencil, the edge is going to be the edge of the head and my fingers over here will indicate where the um, where my right eye starts. So that kind of gives you know a lot of information as to as to how all of this is going to fit on here. And that's what I really have to decide is where do I want these things? And now part of what I'm thinking about is this is my center point here. Obviously, I'm not sure I want the um, the tear duct to be smack in the center of the composition, um, even on um, this vertical axis here, or maybe it's a horizontal axis. I don't know. It's been a long time since I was in uh, grade school math, thank God. Okay, so. Where do I want you? 